and lazy boys from back in the Apollo era, but they have these really cool new suits and new seats that they're they're working in here. So yeah, it's so amazing to see this first live look in the room. There's astronauts Bob Benkin and Doug Hurley sitting in those seats, um, being helped by the suit technicians. Uh, this room was first used for the first Apollo mission, Apollo 7, um, that they suited up in there in 1968. And there they are uh, giving a thumbs up. That looks like Doug giving a thumbs up there. Of course, um, Bob was mission specialist on STS-123 um, and STS-130. Bob's a native of St. Anne, Missouri, so I'm sure folks in his hometown are watching. Lots of hometown pride going on right now. And same for Doug. Um, he was born in Endicott, New York, which happens to be my hometown, too. Oh, wow. Okay. Um, but he considers Apple Lake in his hometown, so I know folks are watching there. And Doug was the pilot on STS-127, STS-135, which was the final shuttle flight. Um, so it's so cool to see them in there. Uh, Lauren and Leland, last time this room was used for this purpose that you see here was STS-135 in 2011, and Doug Hurley was one of the astronauts in there doing that. So this is really amazing to see. Wow, so the suits are actually much more than just garments. They actually connect directly into Dragon seats. As you can see there, those GSC seats or ground support equipment seats are essentially replicas of the seats that are inside of the Dragon spacecraft. And the seats provide communications uh, as through an umbilical, umbilical, but also the ability to pressurize the suit if necessary. So right now what the, the suit team is doing is they're doing communications checks as well as a pressure check to make sure that the, the spacesuit can hold pressure in the event of a cabin depressurization emergency. This is the last time that we're going to do this check prior to the crew boarding Dragon where we'll do it all again. So the way that that leak check will work is we will provide or essentially inflate the suit with air and hold that pressure for a few minutes, watch the depressurization rate, and make sure that it stays within bounds. And as we stay looking in the suit up room, you can see Doug Hurley there in the seat. He is the spacecraft commander for Demo 2. And while he continues with checkouts, we want to give you a closer look at the veteran Marine Corps fighter pilot and spaceflight pioneer. Earlier this morning, they, they stepped outside with a cup of coffee in hand. Oh, we've got some, some visitors in the room now. It looks like uh, SpaceX founder Elon Musk uh, to the right of your screen and NASA Administrator Jim Bridenstine. Of course, you see a, a partition there to keep them a safe distance from the crew, but they're in there to say hello, wish them well uh, before they depart the suit-up room. That's really cool to see there, and, and we can't hear what they're saying, but uh, I'd love to be a fly on the wall in there right now. Oh, here they come. Oh, here they are. Here wow. they come. NASA astronauts Bob Benkin and Doug Hurley. They've each made this journey twice before for the space shuttle missions, but they've never done this in a SpaceX spacesuit. They've never done this together, and they've never done this on their way to head to a commercially built rocket and spacecraft to head to space. When we, I was looking for that Astro van and I see these white Teslas with meatballs and worms on them. It's just a, a new era in space travel. Oh yeah, they're riding in Tesla Model Xs. They have been equipped with cooling units, so once they sit inside, that umbilical that I was referring to earlier uh, will connect to the spacesuit to provide cooling while they're inside of the vehicle. And you can see them talking and waving with their families now. Wow. We just saw them do a virtual <laughs> hug uh, with their sons. Here's Megan and Karen and their sons, yeah. They're the dads. <laughs> the dads, yeah. It's so awesome. Bob Lowe and his family a kiss. Doug actually got to take his wife and son up to the, up, uh, to the pad on the tower uh, yesterday they tweeted out a photo that was so cool. I saw that picture and it had a prominent worm in the picture, right? <laughs> yes. Telling you, worm all day. <laughs> uh, so they're climbing through those DeLorean doors of the Model X. It, this is totally from the future. It's Are they stock? Are they stock Teslas? <laughs> <laughs> and then you see in the front seat there, that's our flight surgeon. Uh, he's climbing in, and the suit technicians, um, there's one Chris Trigg right there, number 12. He is buckling in. Uh, they, they're both, the two suit techs are buckling in, Bob and Doug, and they're connecting that umbilical.
And Lauren, I know you mentioned this earlier, but for folks that maybe weren't watching then or, or can't remember, I mean, it's, it's, we're in Florida, it's super hot, super muggy, so how are they staying cool? There are these portable cooling units. We had one at the ONC building, or sorry, two at the ONC building. There are two in the Teslas. There will be two in the elevators and then two in the white room when they arrive on the crew arm. So we're just keeping the cool air flowing through the suits. There's actually ducting integrated into the suits to keep them cool. And you can see they're saying goodbye to their families. This is awesome. Yeah, it's awesome they, that their, their families get to come up to the window and obviously get a little closer than oh, everybody wow. else. There's Megan and her uh, son. Yeah. Oh my gosh. These are precious moments. This is where this is what was what it's all about. As I mentioned before, it's about the people. It's about the families and working together as one community to get Doug and Bob launching off to the cosmos to the space station. Yeah, it's it's emotional. It's emotional watching that. It really is. Here we go. Now, as we see the convoy, convoy begin the journey to the pad, 39A, we are thinking about each and every one of you, our colleagues and friends at SpaceX and NASA, who have had a, san a hand in seeing the Crew Dragon commercial crew program come to life. And we wish every single one of you could be here up close to see this, but we want you to be a part of this journey regardless of where you are watching today. And so for the next few minutes, uh, while they're making their way to the pad, we want to highlight those people whose hands and words and thoughts built all that we see here today. And we hope all of you watching can feel that pride that each of these NASA job of making things look really beautiful and functional and, and you know, everything just fits perfectly. And I, and I think, you know, when we were having our, our launch pad, there were hoses and things hanging off, but this is a very sleek and elegant and kind of futuristic look at the next era of space travel. And, um, you know, I, I, I just love seeing these Teslas versus the Astrovan. Are they doing selfies? <laughs> it's like they're trying to they're trying to strain to see the top of the crew dragon just taking in the sight. It's pretty high. <laughs> and I don't know if you if you caught this one we, we we could see it briefly on the shot but the uh they the license plate says ISS BND ISS bound. Oh, you nice. follow? Nice. Yeah. <laughs> and hopefully they will be today. We just need the weather to Say, I mean, it looks pretty nice right now, right? But, I mean, obviously it's not just what the weather conditions are here. They've got to think about downrange in case of an abort, mm -hmm. uh, make sure it's okay for recovery if we get into a situation like that, which is unlikely. So this elevator is going to take them up to level 255. It's not 255 floors, but that's 255 feet. And from there, they'll take, once they get up there, and this elevator is pretty zippy, so they'll get up there pretty quickly, um, they'll get out and they'll walk up another flight of stairs to level 265, and that's where they will greet the crew arm. And I don't know, well, obviously Leland's been in the elevator. Lauren, I'm pretty sure you've been out there too, but the first time I rode in the elevator, I was like, whoa, we're really moving in this. You pull some G's. <laughs> a little bit of a jolt when, when it first goes. Yeah, you get used to it. <laughs> <laughs> And then the jolt is a little bit more extreme when you get in the rocket and take off. So. Just a little, <laughs> just a little <laughs> primer. It's a primer. The doors are opening. And here they come. It's a beautiful view up there, too, of the, you know, all of the surroundings in Florida and this national wildlife uh, retreat that we have here, but getting ready for the business at hand of getting in the rocket and uh, heading to the cosmos. And those are the stairs uh, Lauren mentioned. They're at the two, it's the 255 foot level right now. Yes. I think I said that right. And now they're headed up the stairs to the 265 foot level. That's a level that will take them to where the, the crew access arm is in the white room. Yeah, that's the view right there that they're looking at. And Lauren, what are those chevrons, those white chevrons on the on the floor? What do they lead to? Those are basically highlighting the exit path. So in the event that they needed to, that anyone up there needed to get away ASAP, they follow those arrows to where escape baskets await them. There are seven baskets, and they'll hop in there, and it's kind of like a zip line. They'll slide all the way down 
from that uh, fixed service structure down to the ground, safe and away from the rocket. Great. When I think about comfort for the astronauts, it's, it's really every aspect of how you could interact with the spaceship that comes to mind. We have three different seat sizes. We even go so far as molding the foam around the astronaut's body so that there's not any pressure points and it's just generally a pleasurable journey to space. Dragon is a spaceship that's all about safety and reliability. We designed it to be two fault tolerant, which means that any two things could fail. So I could lose a flight computer and a thruster and I could still bring the crew back home safely. We also added a launch escape system. If anything goes wrong on a sense that the crew can get away from Falcon and get picked up safely. I've worked on Dragon since, since 2012. When I see Dragon lift off, I think I'm going to feel a buildup of emotion of eight years of working with some of the best engineers and technicians across the country that, that put their oh, heart and mind that. into making this incredible seconds. moment happen for, for everybody. You guys have started on schedule. Um, we see them signing, looks like they're signing something in there right now. Yeah, we give them a black Sharpie to sign the white room. It's starting a new tradition. Hmm. Yeah, we didn't do that. That's nice. <laughs> That's awesome. That's a good tradition. Yeah. And while we were in the video, we saw Bob and Doug walk down the crew access arm. Leland, it's like that, you know, futuristic look that you talked about. I mean, what did you think seeing that and how that kind of compare and contrast what that was like during shuttle? You know, it's really it's really beautiful, I think. I mean, you know, back when when I was flying on shuttle, the everything looked, oh, look at the thumbs up from Bob. He's, uh, he's getting excited. There's a few little photos at the end there. Um, but it's, it's, a, it's a just a totally different era. I mean, the SpaceX team is really looking to make something futuristic. It's make, looking like... Uh, you know, something from the George Jetsons or from other, other movies that you've seen on television and uh, at the movies. And I think it's something that inspires our country and inspires our children especially to see that they want to be these astronauts. They want to study hard and be that next generation of explorers launching from Cape Canaveral in a SpaceX rocket, um, you know, or working for NASA or working for SpaceX or any of the other uh, companies that are trying to get off planet and I and I think that you know this this change in the way that we're doing business is going to be a really great way of getting more people to the table to fly in space. Yeah that was really important to us. Dragon we see it as a 21st century spaceship. It needs to look like a 21st century spaceship. It flies like a 21st yeah. century spaceship. So of course of course the ground support equipment should look like it's from the same era. The suits do. Mm -hmm. um, all of that sort of future-facing technology and aesthetic is super important to us. Uh, actually, right now, you can see that duct in uh, the, the hands of member number five there. Um, that is an ECS duct, or environmental control system duct. Um, once this original, oh, did one just, who just went in? Was that Doug or Bob? I think that was Doug. Okay, Doug that just was climbed Doug, in. Yeah. That is awesome. He's ahead of schedule. Somebody tell him to climb back <laughs> out. Book in. It is great. He's ready. He's like Leland. We, we were joking earlier about it. We were going to have to buckle Leland into his seat here to keep him from running out there. Yeah, if we had stayed outside, I was going to swim across the moat and <laughs> run over and get in the, in the vehicle with Bob and Doug. Right, but, uh, now Bob's going in. Yeah. This is great. So the suit technicians are helping the crew climb inside. Uh, they're holding back the hatch seals to protect the, the seals on the hatch, but also making sure that the crew doesn't hit their head or anything on the way in. Even though they have helmets, we still don't want that to happen. And, and you know, they, they climbed in a couple minutes earlier than we expected them to, but you know, Lauren, that, you know, SpaceX has rehearsed this over and over and over again with Bob and Doug. And, you know, sometimes, and, and I've heard them say, you know, well, we might be a little bit ahead of schedule if we're ready. It just gives them more time <laughs> to check things out, you know? Yeah. So right now what the crew, the, the suit technicians are doing is they're strapping the crew's feet into these restraints that the boots sit inside of. They're then going to close those five-point harnesses um, around them. I know, Leland, you talked about some of the, the harnessing that you had in the past with the shuttle. Yeah, I mean, this is such a more sleek design where there's one point to plug in to get cooling, communications, and, and everything. And, I, you know, we had a five-point harness. We, 
you know, had these hoses and things all over the place. But I think this is a much more streamlined uh, look into the future of space travel. And similar to what was going in the ONC building during the suit checkouts, that seat umbilical is going to connect to the right thigh uh, of the spacesuit. Um, there is a fluid module that is connected to the spacesuit, and that provides fresh cooling air and also nitrox for the leak checks that are going to come up later. But the audio system is also going through that umbilical. Mm -hmm. So um, while the crew is, or while the, the uh, suit techs are getting the crew all, all buckled in, um, they're going to perform a comm check. And that's, again, similar to what was done at the ONC building, but this time the integrated two-way communications between the astronauts and the ground crew. And we're going to head back to Hawthorne now, as we just saw Bob and Doug ingress Crew Dragon. Dan? Hey, thanks. Yeah, it's, it's incredible to see them inside the capsule. If you're just now tuning in, great timing. You're watching our coverage of the mission known as Demonstration Mission 2 or Demo 2. Today, SpaceX and NASA are going to be sending people into orbit on a mission to the International Space Station for the first time from U.S. soil since 2011. Bob Bankin and Doug Hurley are those astronauts flying in Dragon. They're inside. That's uh, Doug Hurley really close to our screen and Bob Bankin on the further seat away from us. And they are getting ready to lift off from pad 39A where Falcon 9 will lift off 